Saving up for retirement? How do you measure up? How do you stack up against your peers? I've got retirement account statistics for 2024. That and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. How do you measure up with what you're doing to save up for retirement? How, how, do, you, how do you measure up? Everyone's financial life is different. It's unique. And, and even though you might work the same job, you might live in the same neighborhood, you might have grown up in the same house, it's often where we compare to those folks and think, well, I should be doing like what I should be doing as well as they're doing. What can I see in, about their financial life to get a clue? Are they doing better than me? And oftentimes that's, that's a chasing after the wind, guys. It, it is. They're, your financial life is unique to you despite those similarities and despite what you might see financially. It's unique. So for you, it may be appropriate to where you need to save up more than the average person in your 401k. Maybe your situation is such that you could get by with saving a little bit less than the average. I, I don't know. Maybe your investment structure is such that now for your risk level to stay the course, you need a little bit smoother of a ride and the lower potential returns that that will bring. Or maybe you're comfortable, nope, I'm, I'll take all the swings the market gives and, and, and the higher potential return your financial life is very unique. So you gotta be careful when, when, when playing the comparison game. Still, we're using the same tools, right? We're saving up in the 401ks, different IRAs, Roth IRAs, those sorts of things. What are the averages? What are the retirement account statistics so you can see how you measure up? All right, well, these statistics were released recently. So they're for 2024, uh, include some 2023 data, but the Investment Company Institute releases as well. I've got the information linked below in the description, but average 401k contribution percentage, average 401k contribution percentage, 7%. Now, I believe this is for those that are contributing to a 401k, their average, when you average the folks that are just doing three and the folks that are doing 15, the average is 7%. I don't think this includes all the folks that could be contributing to a 401k, but are choosing not to. For those choosing to contribute, 7%. Are you doing average? Are you doing above average? Are you doing below average? Coming up, I always tell people one of my hacks, one of my habits, at the beginning of the year, increase your contribution 1% each and every year. We'll see this average go up as well. What's the average company match? 4.6%. This was this was surprising. This is higher than what I expected. Safe Harbor, many 401k companies are shifting to Safe Harbor plans. That's what we have here. And the basic Safe Harbor matching contribution is 4%. And so not too surprising to see that this is close to it, but 4.6%, but the average company match. Now, if you work for an employer that does not do a match or that does below average, it's your retirement. It's still your retirement. That just means you need to be saving as aggressively. Don't let that distract you or, or, or kind of get you frustrated. No, get the full company match, save aggressively for your retirement. Average number of investment choices within your 401k plan, 27, 27. Now this, uh, this really frustrates us certified financial planners. Many of these 27 are target date funds. I would, I would say that this is probably close. And of the 27, half are target date funds. And the, half are, uh, the other half are, well, you get a large cap fund or maybe two large cap fund options, a small cap, maybe an international, two or three bond funds. And, and, and you, don't, you don't have enough ingredients, enough tools to, to make a fully diversified portfolio. There's studies way back when that said the more investment choices are offered, the more confusing it is, and fewer people will sign up. But that just means it's harder for you to build a fully robust and fully diversified uh, portfolio. But average Investment choices, number of investment choices, 27 and a half in the 401k. Average annual return performance in the 401k. I, I, I dislike this. I'm, I'm frustrated that they even put it in there. 9.7%. Now, that's looking back over the past five years as an annualized rate of return. The past five years does not, does not encompass a, a full long-term perspective of what it looks like to invest. And this has been an extraordinarily great time to invest in large cap stocks, large company stocks, hasn't been that great of a time, small cap and international, and has been one of the worst time periods 
for bond. So I wouldn't look at this and say, well, now this is the bogey. I need to hit this or better every single year to be above average. No, no, no. Stay diversified, stay the course, work with your CFP, make sure you've got the right mix of investments. I, I would not get distracted by this average rate of return here that this is showing. Here's the data point that most of you I know we're looking for. What's the average balance, the average 401k balance? Again, I believe this is uh, obviously just to folks that have been contributing to a 401k. If you're eligible but you're not contributing, I don't think they put zeros in for those folks. So those that have a 401k balance, what's the average? 125 grand, almost 126 grand. Now, what you don't know is, well, how, you know, obviously the 401k balance depends on how long you've been at the employer. So how long have you been contributing? And yes, how much have you been contributing? How much growth and, and so on? But if people are shifting jobs every five years or so, that's going to weigh on this number. This does not include uh, IRAs, Roth IRAs, those sorts of things. So, but the average 401k balance, almost 126,000. I like this percentage. I, I feel like it needs to be 100. I think it will be 100, give it a few more years, but average or what's the percentage of 401k plans that also offer a Roth contribution option to your 401k, 93.5%. Most, the, the significant majority of 401k plans offer a Roth side, a Roth component to it. I think that's going to 100%, it, or at least we'll get closer there as we get to some of the Secure Act 2.0 rules that take effect in 2026 that require highly compensated employees, if they're contributing uh, uh, to a, the, the catch-up contribution, those will have to be Roth. Therefore, the plan better have a Roth option. I think this is going to 100%, but great that it's already such a high number, 93.5%. Last couple statistics here. I, I mentioned when we were looking at the average 401k balance, hey, this doesn't include IRAs, which when you switch employers, you're likely rolling over that old 401k into an IRA. What's the average IRA balance? Average IRA account balance, 127,000. So actually pretty similar. So this would mean for those that have a 401k and those that have an IRA, the average between the two is about 250 grand. It depends on your age, depend on your retirement goals, whether that's appropriate for you or not, but that's the, that's the average. And I found these last two data points really interesting. Of those that made contributions to IRAs last year, 63% of those contributions went into the Roth side, the Roth 401k, or excuse me, the Roth IRA, as opposed to a traditional IRA. The average contribution amount when someone is contributing to an IRA, whether IRA, traditional IRA or Roth, about four grand. So below that maximum, that maximum seven grand for 2024, also seven grand for 2025. So those are your retirement account statistics. How do you measure up? How do you stack up? And I would tell you, whatever you're feeling, use those emotions to motivate you, to motivate you. Whether you're looking at this saying, I'm actually not, I'm actually a little behind in some areas that I really wanted to be above average. I'm seeing I'm, be, I'm, I'm below average. No, 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 use that as motivation to catch up. I, we've seen, I've never seen a financial life that we couldn't build a plan for to get you on track and where you wanted to go. So, so even if you're not where you think you ought to be, be optimistic, use that energy to move forward. If you're above in some areas, use that as motivation as well. Not to la you know, relax, but to keep going and, and so on. Because even though we just played a little bit of the compare game, no, no, no. The, compare, the, the comparison that you should be doing is where are you to today compared to where you were yesterday or where you were six months or 12 months ago? Are you making progress in your finances? Are you saving up a strong amount towards retirement? But also where do you stand today compared to where you want to be for your goals? That's the, those are the two comparisons that I would make and you'll do so when working with your certified financial planner. They're gonna help track your net worth and monitor your, your financial progress to see if you're, making, if, you're, if you're on track, but then also map out where do you wanna be, whether that's a retirement goal or a savings goal, where do you wanna be and are you on track for that as well? Work with your certified financial planner on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, cohorn.com. That's Corhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well or send us an email, info at Corhorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go on, take your next wise step in your financial life.